Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be looking at whether or not you need ground near differential pairs in order for a differential interface to function. Now, this question sometimes comes up in discussions on EMI and high-speed design, and it always arises due to the self-referencing properties of traces in a differential pair. We're gonna look at what happens with return current in differential pairs when there's a plane nearby, how the plane sets the impedance, and what happens when you take the spacing between differential pairs and you make it really small, and whether or not the ground plane has any more influence. Let's get started. So to answer the question of whether or not we absolutely need ground very close to differential pairs in order for a differential interface to function, let's take a look at what defines differential impedance. Now if I have a PCB and I have a ground plane on the next layer, we'll call this ground, and here up top we have some differential microstrips. This is my positive polarity signal, and this is my negative polarity signal. There's going to be some self-inductance and self-capacitance for each of these traces. The self-inductance and the self-capacitance determines the impedance of just an individual trace when there's no other stuff around. But when we bring these two traces together, we have some mutual capacitance between the two traces and there is some mutual inductance. Now, I don't really know how to draw mutual inductance in this 2D cross section like this, but trust me, it's there. Now, because we have all of these capacitances and inductances between these traces, each trace is going to have what is called an odd mode impedance. And here, the odd mode impedance is given by this square root of the self-inductance minus the mutual inductance, divided by the self-capacitance plus two times the mutual inductance. So this is the odd mode impedance, and the differential impedance is very simple. It is just double this odd mode impedance. So we stick a two right here as well, and there you go. That's the equation for lossless differential impedance. Now, of course, there are loss terms because there's skin effect, there's dielectric loss, Normally we would want to include those, but just for being able to understand the influence of ground, then we only need these terms in the differential impedance equation. Now here we haven't defined what are the dimensions of our traces or anything else in this system, right? We have a trace width, we have a spacing between the traces, and then we have a height of the substrate or a height of the traces above the ground plane. And then there's also a thickness of the traces, and the thickness does start to matter once you get to very narrow line widths. What happens if we were to take the ground plane and move it very far away? Or in other words, we were to, let's say, take the spacing over height value, and we were going to make that value very small by increasing the height or by making the spacing very small. Well, in this case, what happens is we have a mutual capacitance between these two traces, but we also have a self-capacitance right here from each trace to ground. So when we take ground and move it very far away from the two traces, the self-capacitance starts to go down because we're increasing this distance. But this mutual capacitance probably stays the same or increases. And so in that case where we start to have very little influence from ground, we can almost approximate this as being two multiplied by some self-inductance minus some mutual inductance divided by approximately two times the mutual capacitance. Now, I only bring up this formula to emphasize the fact that the mutual capacitance starts to dominate between these two traces, and it is the spacing value that will primarily determine the differential impedance of this pair of traces. Now, this explains why you can route a protocol like USB on a two-layer board, where the two-layer board has a substrate thickness that causes the board to have a total thickness of 62 mils. So you basically have like a 58 mil or a 60 mil dielectric thickness in that case. And in that case, your differential impedance looks a lot like this formula just because the mutual capacitance is gonna have a much stronger influence 
on the differential impedance than the self capacitance will. Now we showed an example of what that looks like in another video. We did a USB module project and that USB to UART converter module had a USB differential pair routed on a two layer board and we were able to keep those traces reasonably thin. We didn't have these big fat traces that would normally result on a very thick substrate if we were just dealing with single ended signals. Because we're dealing with the differential signal, the two traces reference each other. That means the positive signal uses the negative signal as its ground and vice versa. So the two traces are self-referencing. This essentially means that the positive trace has its return current in the negative trace and vice versa. The negative trace has its return current mostly in the positive trace. Now there's always going to be a little bit of return current here in the ground plane. Here we would have the V positive return and then here we would have the V negative return and they're going to have some sort of nearly or approximately Gaussian distribution beneath the traces, but mostly the return current is going to be isolated in the other trace. So just to summarize, once you have that very thick substrate, the primary parameter determining the differential impedance is going to be the spacing between the traces and the width of the traces. So it's going to be these two parameters right here that are boxed in red. Now don't be surprised if you have to put your traces very close together when you have, for example, a two layer PCB like the USB module project that we showed because that's what's going to be needed to ensure that you hit the required differential impedance target without having really big fat wide traces. Now all of this helps explain why certain cabling uses differential pairs rather than single ended signals. It's because differential pairs are self-referencing and you are not required to put a ground wire into that cable. Now this is one of the original motivations for even using differential pairs because back when high speed serial signaling was first being implemented, that high speed serial signaling, if done on a single ended wire, would produce so much noise that the system would never pass EMC standards. But by using a differential pair, the two sides of the differential pair suppress that noise and reduce radiated emissions. And this is why you can put a differential signal onto a cable and then you'll still be able to pass EMC testing. Now, if you look at a cable like a USB cable and you cut it open and you look at the cross section, you will see that there is a ground connection. And you can even see that by looking at the pinout. So you're able to bridge ground across devices. Now, the presence of that ground does affect radiated emissions around that differential pair, and it also impacts the immunity or susceptibility of that differential pair to external noise. So having the ground is very beneficial in that respect, but it's not absolutely required for the system to function. In the case of USB, you're bringing ground across because you're also bringing a power connection across. USB channels are meant to provide both data and power. But the point still stands. The ground is not required for that differential interface to function, and it is the presence of the positive and negative trace in the differential pair in that cable that sets the impedance of that cable to the required value. Now, this all begs the question, what would happen in a PCB if we were to take this spacing value and make it really small, and then take this substrate thickness value and make it very large? Can we actually calculate the impedance in that case? Well, as it turns out we can, we can use the tools in Altium Designer. So let's hop into Altium Designer and take a look. So I'm inside of Altium Designer and I have a new PCB opening up the layer stack manager. And what we wanna do is look at what happens with differential pairs when we bring the spacing really close together and what happens when we start to move the ground near or far from the traces. Now, let's just suppose for a moment that I just have a two layer board. So we're gonna look at microstrips and we're gonna have the bottom layer be ground and we'll have the top layer be our traces. Now here, I wanna set up a differential impedance profile. We're just gonna target 100 ohms. And you can already see here on screen that the default trace gap of five mils gives us a width of 7.75 mils. And that's when our substrate thickness is 12.6 mils. Now, let's just suppose for a moment that we increase that spacing a little bit and we go to very large thickness. So when I say very large thickness, 
we're gonna say 100 mils right here. And one of the reasons we're doing that is we're basically looking at a situation where ground is very far away from our differential pair. Well, when we go to 100 mils thickness, we already see that the trace width has jumped up to 25 mils. If we go to, let's say, 1,000 mils thickness, now we get up to 22 mils. And so you can already see just from this simple simulation that there is a limit where you take the ground away from those differential pairs. And at some point, the width will stop increasing. We just went from 100 mils with a 21 mil wide trace to 1,000 mils with a 22 mil wide trace. And so you can see that at some point, the ground gets so far away from the differential pairs that it stops having an influence on the impedance. And that's very clear from this simulation result. What if we were to bring our traces down to a gap of let's say three mils and we start moving the ground plane around nearby? Well here with a three mil trace gap, we have a 3.67 mil wide trace. And if we just start with, for example, 20 mil thick dielectric, we see here that our width is only 4.24 mils. Once we take that 20 mil dielectric, we make it 100 mils, we get down to 3.77 mils. And then once we go to 1,000 mils, you see that we're at 3.67 mils. So already by the time we're at 100 mils, we're already converging to that trace width that corresponds to the situation with no ground at all. So this is with a very narrow trace gap at three mils. And so what this suggests is that once you get into an HDI or an ultra HDI situation, and you have those traces routed very close together, you could theoretically not have any ground nearby and it's only going to be that trace gap that sets the trace width requirement to hit your differential impedance, and no other factors are going to have a major influence until they also get to a distance that's comparable to three mils. This is really important in Ultra HDI because in Ultra HDI, we're putting our traces so close together down at these two mil and three mil line spacings that ideally only the trace spacing should affect the trace width required to hit a differential impedance. Now, I'm not the first person to think of this. The first person to actually look at this is Eric Bogatin, and he published an article in Signal Integrity Journal that looked at this exact situation where we have fine line routing with very narrow spacing between differential pairs with no ground nearby. Let's take a look at that article. Now here we are in Signal Integrity Journal. This is a, an article that is co-authored by Eric Bogatin. There are some other great authors on this article and this article is titled Ultra Fine Line Differential Pair Design with No Return Plane. Now this is ultimately targeting design in the UHDI regime, but it really nicely explains what happens when differential pairs get very close together and when the influence of ground stops mattering. And what you wanna look at here are these graphs in figures four, five, and six, as well as figure seven. Let's take a look at figure five because I think this is really the most instructive. Now it's a little difficult to see because these graphs are a bit small, but here you can see what happens when we have the dielectric thickness or the distance from our differential pairs to ground getting much larger than the span across our differential channel. So in this article, they're defining the span as the spacing between the pairs plus the two line widths. So two times the line width plus the spacing. That's the value of the span. And what this graph is showing is that when the distance from the differential pair to ground is much larger than the span across those differential pairs, this impedance of that differential pair saturates up to its 100 ohm value when that ground plane gets very far away. Now you can see here that this happens for a variety of values of that span. They start from four mil, so that would be like having one mil traces with two mil spacing, then to 10 mil, and then all the way up to 50 mils. So once you get those pairs close together, it is the distance between the differential pairs that really dominates and determines whether or not you're going to have that very narrow line width. So that explains why in order to have very narrow traces in our differential pair with ground very far away from the traces, we had to put those traces very close together. Now, this only tells us about the impedance value of that differential pair. It doesn't tell us anything about things like EMI, differential crosstalk, those types of issues. Well, for those types of issues, 
the ground and the distance from ground to the differential pairs does play a major role. And so this is something I've discussed in other videos in the past, and I'll do a deeper dive on differential crosstalk here in the near future, and we can learn more about those issues. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. I hope this explains some of the importance of spacing between differential pairs, and it does nicely illustrate one instance where you actually do need to have very close coupling between the traces in your differential pair. If you have comments and questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time. Yeah.